Hi, I'm Dave. Welcome to Dave Takes It On, our December pricing video. Might well shock a few people as we reveal the good, the bad and the ugly in the EV public charging world. How are prices compared to a year ago? Who has appeared on the scene? Who has faded away? Dave Takes It On looks back over his first nine months. Yeah, we launched our first video on the 14th of March this year. I'm Dave, so let's look at what's changed in this, the first of two videos. Well, today's EV public charging scene is moving incredibly fast. So as the year nears an end, Dave takes it on, looks back at how it all started and how far we've come today. In a second video out next week, I'll be having a look at what's happening now that will change EV charging for next year. Yep, I'm going to be looking at where we're likely to be by the end of next year. Well, bookmark my prediction. We'll see in 12 months' time how close or not, I actually got. Well, headlines first. Our rapid fire round up of price prices leads with Tesla having by far the most ultra rapid EV charges in the UK today, with over 1,200, the majority of which are well over 150 kilowatts, most are 250. Just a handful are down as slow as 125 kilowatts. And the price averaged out over our normal 11 sites is peak 48.64 pence per kilowatt hour, off peak 35.18 pence, and the lowest super off peak rate is 27 pence. Well, that means the peak price is up by 5.28 pence per kilowatt hour, while the off peak is virtually unchanged at just 0.09 pence per kilowatt hour lower. That's less than a tenth of a penny, penny difference. Well, next in line in rising price order is EV Point at 64 pence, making a big name in not only having a low price, but also installing really large numbers and having just done a deal with Tesla to buy their very latest V4 chargers. Well, this EV Point is owned by EV Group, a locally based company with ambitious plans. They're targeting 20,000 chargers in time. Fastnet remains unchanged to 69 pence, but last the number of charges is starting to increase, but only very slowly. High quality charges, yet yeah, with a very distinctive canopy, the rollout is just too slow. I know they are much bigger in Europe and expanding faster, but we need charges here. Ionity are a very disappointing price, 74 pence per kilowatt hour. Not the worst, and in fact most people do not ever pay this but exciting in the number of installations going in. Well, for months they hovered at around 100 chargers, and now there's left to 151, across 23 locations and a further 15 under construction. Now, they offer memberships and deals with manufacturers, which bring prices down to as little as 30 pence per kilowatt hour, as we found out recently, although only for a limited period of time. Well, it's nice to see 350 kilowatt chargers going in in groups of up to six at a location. Instavolt are the disappointment of the year, raising prices from 65 pence at the start of the year right up to 85 pence today. They have more chargers than Tesla, but the majority are 50 kilowatts and the maximum is a mere 160 kilowatts. Now there is a place still for 50 kilowatt chargers. But that place is fading fast. Most new cars are now 100 kilowatts or over charging speed. A very good number up well above 150 kilowatts and many are over 200. Tesla, Mercedes, BMW, Hyundai, Kia, Porsche. And with Neo now claiming to have a new battery that can add 300 miles of range in less than 15 minutes, that means that most cars will only need 10 minutes charging at most. This is the way forward. We do need the charger technology to keep up with battery advances. GridServe now has chargers faster than the fastest car in the UK can charge. Instavolt are dropping behind rapidly while raising prices. EV, EV, Evil Eye is also gaining ground, not yet in the big league, but they have ambitious plans and I'm seeing them all over the country. Not cheap, 75 pence, but not the dearest either. Neat units in good locations. 
I'm going to keep an eye on these. Apple Green have at last been making an effort. First with a drop uh, to 77p average, although many are still actually 79p, but they are installing right across the country. And it's interesting that they're installing alongside other charger networks, something the petrol giants never ever do. And uh, uh, these are funded by the petrol giants. Their ABB units are powerful, around 180 kilowatts average, and some very much more powerful. Well, for a petrol giant funded EV network, I'm getting a bit more interested in them. Months of hype and no action, now some big action. Shell appear to have dropped their price down to 81 pence in many locations. Still a scandal. Maybe that's just to make it more attractive uh, if they're going to sell. If that's still on the cards. More and more I come across charges on garage forecourts that have failed and have been for a long time. Will they sell the charging business? Won't they sell? Well, it's a bit too early to tell. But before all the anti-EV brigade leap on their high horses and shout 85 pence, that's absolutely, utterly ridiculous, let's put it into context. 85 pence is the EV equivalent of 30 pence extra per litre for petrol on the motorway services. They've been around for years. They're great for an emergency top-up, but there are few of us, few, e, a few petrol drivers, who will use Shell or indeed Instavolt, as the main charging network. Well, latest figures now confirm that 86% of drivers now have access to off-road parking for at least one vehicle at their normal home address. Even more striking is the figure of 93% of EV owners can now charge their car at home. 93%! 52% say they do it on a smart charger, 28% do it on a non-smart charger, and 13% on a non-dedicated charger. Presumably these are the weatherproof 13 amp sockets, uh, granny chargers and equivalent. 93% charging at home. That is staggering. As always, I identify my sources, and this comes direct from the Department of Transport in a report entitled Britain Thinks. Read it. So, all you negative anti-EV brigade who say the majority cannot charge at home, your government states 93% can. There is much more interesting data in this report. I'll make a separate video on this and other reports that are out at the moment very soon. But one other piece of data, only about 25% of drivers make a longer trip of more than 130 miles once a week. About 30% make that journey once a month and 28% only several times a year. About 17% once a year or never. Well, so much for range anxiety. 76% of drivers make a journey of more than 130 miles only a few times a year. Well, so much for our look at EVs when they can do a thousand mile on a single charge. I do love these reports. Well, put simply, the majority, by far, by a massive amount, charge at home very much cheaper than the prices I've quoted above. The average overnight tariff is around 10 pence per kilowatt hour. Some as low as 5p and even some are totally free. Now, this will be the subject of a home pricing video due out before the end of the year. Or subscribe, click the bell notification so you'll be informed when it's launched. So the majority, over 76%, will only ever charge away from home a handful of times a year. And don't forget, a lot of EVs can easily cover 130 miles round trip. Well, this is exactly what many of the comments I receive state. They almost never charge away from home, apart from maybe an annual holiday. Well, if you cover 8,000 miles a year, and you've got a reasonably efficient car, you might buy about 2,000 kilowatt hours of electricity a year. If you charge at public chargers only 5 to 10 times a year, that would average out about 90% charging at Tempe, and only 10% at 85p. That comes out to 17.5 pence per kilowatt hour, 
or less than 5p a mile. So, does the 85 pence now sound so silly? Well, how do you charge? Is it mostly at home? Are you a long distance driver? Let me know in the comments below. Well, that survey also stated that 91% of EV owners are satisfied with the public charging structure and will definitely not go back to petrol or diesel ever again. Well, so much for all these reports of EV owners ditching their cars, they can't afford them, not saving money. There's so much rubbish out there. Have you noticed? Well, and it's growing, so somebody somewhere is starting to get really worried. Well, just a quick glance back into the past. In 2013, just 10 years ago, we had less than 5,000 chargers and none were rapid. All were 22 kilowatts or less AC chargers. Imagine that. Well, within a couple of years, we had the first of the rapid chargers, some 50 kilowatts and above, especially as Tesla began installing 150 kilowatt superchargers. Still less than 10,000 in the whole country. It's a surprise EVs took off at all. Well, today we find over 53,000 devices with more than 81,000 connectors, according to ZapMap. Some chargers have more than one plug. There are now 5,054 locations with rapid or ultra-rapid chargers, and 9,992 devices have 20,000 connectors. Well, it's sad to see just two plugs per charger and just two chargers per location. Well, we've come a long way and the situation today is really rather good. 93% can charge at home. 25% of drivers only do journeys over 130 miles a few times a year. This is absolutely ideal territory for EVs. Don't listen to the doomsayers. And even better news is that electric vans are following just a few years behind. Official figures show that over 50,000 are now registered in the UK as of November. I am seeing the van and lorry charges beginning to appear in motorway services, dedicated ones. Stand by for the rush. We have come a very long way since I bought my EV four years ago, and the pace of growth this year is dramatic indeed. Now, there will always be people who do not have their fair share of chargers or find no suitable chargers along their normal route. That, I'm afraid, is always going to happen. Up here in the northwest, we're blessed with more than average rapid and ultra rapid chargers, but then Manchester itself is still a bit of a black spot. Pricing is holding up quite well, with the obvious exception of Instavolt. Just a few are cashing in while they can. As Tesla opened more superchargers to non-Tesla driver, the situation will change. As a driver, I find it appalling that they've hiked prices. As a businessman, I see there's nothing else they can do to survive. All industries do it. You'll know this. Why are package holidays so frightfully expensive in school holidays? Why are wedding cakes so much more expensive than birthday cakes? Well, the industry is changing. Some are cashing in, some aren't. It's going to be an exciting 12 months ahead. Well, thanks very much for watching. If you have enjoyed this video, please click the like button. And if you'd like to see more, please subscribe and click the notification bell so we can notify you next time we launch a video. And a massive thank you to all our Patreon supporters. It is your support that enables us to go out and make these videos for you. So thank you very much for your contribution. I'm Dave.